Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic for um, what will either turn out to be an unusual episode or not an episode at all. Um, a few days ago, Simon did a classic puzzle um, after showing another one that he had not been able to finish because it was just too difficult to solve logically was the effect. Um, that was Tatooine Sunset by Philip Newman. And a few people in the videos commented they'd quite like to see my solving it. Now, some of them, I think, may have meant that they'd like to see a logical solve of that puzzle, but I wouldn't even have tried it logically because I just don't have the brain to see the advanced techniques, certainly not once there are many of them acting together. Um, so what I would have done in a competition, and this may have been what some people were getting at, is found a way to get the solution. And that's what I thought I'd try now. I haven't done competitive style solving for a long time because I've been doing videos for the channel instead and really focusing hard on logic. So I really don't know how this is going to go. I've never tried the puzzle. Looks lovely. I mean, I love the twin suns thing. Did Simon call them twin moons? He knows his Star Wars mythology better than that. Um, but we are going to see if I can get to the end of this puzzle in any way. And I'm going to imagine I was in a competition to see well, I will talk to you about what I'm thinking. Um, so, just going to give it a try and see what happens. And this video may not see the light of day. Um, do give it... A, I mean, you've seen the puzzle before because Simon did provide a link to it. But if you want to try it again, I am providing a link to this puzzle under the video. But uh, here we go. Let's get cracking. So, we've got twos at the bottom. I limited to there. Sixes to there. Nothing else. Eights somewhere in one of those three. Oh, there's just virtually no repeats in the shoots at all. Two, two, two up there. That's it. That's all we get from ups and downs. Okay, but we've got fives looking into that pattern. So five can go in there. Uh, fives here, fives here as well, and we get restricted to these interesting patterns on fives, and this one. So what would happen with a five here? And I'm going to, let's colour it and see what would happen with the five there. I'm colouring it so I know where to come back to if it goes wrong, which it probably will, which there's at least a 50% chance of it doing, I would say, because I have no particular reason to select that five, and it's turning out... Ah, oh, yes, maybe it is. Okay, it's helpful on the fives, and in fact, they're all done now, and several sixes, so not an unreasonable choice. At least it ought to tell us something if it turns out to be wrong. Six there. That, yeah, and that breaks straight away. Well, this almost straight away. If I've done that right, this cell can't be a six, obviously, so we can't get a six into box one. So five is not there. And that's a reasonably quick way. I mean, there might have been some other logical way of interpreting that. I'm not going to bother looking for it, but proving that 5 can't be there is quite useful. So let's uncolor the cell as well. Now 5 is in one of those two. That makes this 5 right. So we can take the 5 out of there and there and put a 5 in here. Uh, yes, that does give a five there and there, and suddenly I've done all the fives. So that's something. Um, now, has that blocked off any cells that are unbelievably useful? Probably not. Six, six three, two, five, four. <sighs> Ooh, no, there's so little help here. Um, seven is restricted to those two cells, I can see. Ah, and those, actually seven and nine there. 
given the positions of 7 and 9 here. So we've got a triple now here of 1, 6, 8. So that's 1, 6, that's 1 or 8. That could be any of them, which is irritating. So what do we do next? We're going to have to select something else to try. I mean, that's literally the only way I, I know of going about this. So what would be useful? OK, I can see this would be interesting. I'm going to try a 6 here. Let's color this one red, put a 6 in there and see if it works. The reason I'm trying that is it'll tell us something useful if it doesn't work. We'll get that 6 there. But if it does work, we get some restrictions over here. We get a 6 in one of those two. That lets us place a 6 up at the top. 6 there. That fixes the whole triple. And I mean, if we didn't know we were having a bit of a punt, we'd be cooking with gas. Now this is a naked single. Now I feel good. Um, one for... 2 and 9, an annoying triple left in column 2. So forward 2 resolutions. This is 6 though, that's 6. Right, so let's get rid of the 6s out of there. That's all the 6s done suddenly. Okay. Uh, now what? Can we carry on? Yes, that's a naked single 1. 3, 4 pair at the top. 6, 5, 3. That's four or eight. Four is restricted. Actually, we could have done that before. Four is definitely restricted to one of those two cells. They're all givens. That's four or eight. That's three or eight. That's three, four or eight. Six, two, seven. Two. One or eight there, but this I think can be any of one, four, eight in the row. Ah, oh, I'm just going to have to try something else. I hate double bifurcating, which is leaving that in to be unwound, but I just can't see how else we would make progress here. Ah, oh, three is limited to one of those two cells, which is not actually helping at all. Oh, not in the middle, sorry. Wrong pencil mark, there we go, on the corners. One, four, nine. Oh, this is a naked single, eight. Ah, okay. Well, that gives some hope. Two or nine there, so we've got a two, nine pair. Yes, that eight creates a four, eight pair. Oh, which doesn't help at all. Seven or nine, two, seven or nine. One, four, that can't be eight now, right? Eight, eight. Ah, oh, still not quite getting through. That's irritating. Five, eight, six, nine, seven, two, three, that's one or four. So many cells now, though coming down to just two possibilities, but that is not buttering my parsnips now. Come on. Gonna have to try something else. Let's try four here would be very useful, wouldn't it? Because it would create the eight here. Let's try that. So. A double bifurcation, which I do not recommend because the chances are slim and it's slow, but this puzzle is absolutely vicious. So that would give a four there. Three, four, four up here. That would finish the fours. One, seven, nine. Um, oh, finish the fours. Yes, I can actually. I missed one. Sorry. Now, nine, one there. Ah, oh, it puts one in one of these two. That can't be... Oh, this one is now one, in fact, because it was a one or four before. So that's a one-three pair, so I can put seven in there. 
9 and 7. This is looking good. We might actually be getting there, having sort of stumbled our way through. 3, that's a naked single. 2, 1 and 3. So we get 1 there, which is incredibly useful because it fixes the 2 and the 8. And this is working now. 9 and 3. No, and it's now not working because of those threes. Right. Wow, it's amazing how far you can get. Hopeless, right. So that four in the yellow bifurcation was wrong. Why have I still got three colored yellow? I don't know. The, the one I did work on, wow, it goes back a long way, doesn't it? There it was. So that was not a four. That was a one. And now this must be right, given this six, which might still be wrong. But if that's right, we're on the right track now. So seven, four, or nine there. Now, are there any of the same steps that I should be using that I did just use before? And if not, how frustrating is that? Right, that, oh, that's a three. Yes, because I put that eight in. Yeah, that's fine, okay. Um, No, oh, that wasn't helpful. Eight, eight. That's eight now. Yes, okay, that is helpful, hopefully. That's a seven, nine pair, so I can place four there and four here. So I am, I think, again, finishing the fours with one here and one there. Okay, now I've got a one, three pair down the end column. Seven and eight to go into those two. Let's take out the other pencil marks because they're annoying. Um, seven, three, eight, five, four, six. That's a naked single nine. One, two pair here. That nine has sorted out seven and nine and seven and eight. Actually, that eight would have done that earlier. That finishes nine and seven there. Two and nine up here and eight. And this might be the correct solution. It, I think we've got even further than last time, which is no guarantee in a puzzle this hard, but it is promising. Top row done. Now, I failed in row three last time, but that succeeds this time. Two there, nine there, two boxes left, one and three. Yeah, we can do them. That's a seven. And I think this is the right answer to the Tatooine Sunset Puzzle. And that is kind of how I would have gone about it in a competition, in effect. Let, well, let's hit the check button. This is the ultimate test. Yeah, okay. So there we go. So there are ways of finishing these puzzles. Now, that's not going to be a delight to the extreme logicians, to, in fact, most of the people who follow this channel to see the beautiful logic. It doesn't quite work that way if you are just desperately trying to find a solution. Um, and this required effectively uniqueness. I haven't proved that this puzzle has only one solution. I've just got to the only solution it can have, given that it only has one. So I hope that's of some interest to you anyway. I mean, more an insight into competition solving, perhaps, um, and other techniques rather than into pure logic and the, the glorious world of that, but of course we're on a different world here, we're on Tatooine, and uh, the rules are different there. So thanks very much for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoyed that, I hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic, bye for now.